Hello everyone. Well, you can tell that the weeks are dragging on by the length of my hair. I'm calm. <laughs> uh, you can talk. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Applies to both of us. Can't wait. Can't wait for the hairdressers to open. Still, it's only going to be a couple of weeks now, I hope. Um, anyway, be that as it may, um, we're here to put um, some ideas to you about playing a particular song. And the song we've chosen for this week is Till There Was You. Uh, which was written originally as a melody in 1950 by Meredith Wilson. And then in 1957, he put some words to it, and rewrote it and incorporated it into a, a musical show, The Music Man. And it's been uh, doing the rounds ever since. The Beatles covered it uh, in the 60s and made rather a nice job of it. The original sheet music is in E flat. The Beatles did it in F or sometimes G, but um, I mean, that's going up into the stratosphere as far as we're concerned, vocal range wise. So um, well, we've brought it down to the old faithful C. And this song is interesting in that it, this continues our exploration of diminished chords or diminished seventh chords as they're properly known, um, because this song incorporates all three of them and you know that there are only three don't you because each diminished or as i say properly people say c dim for short what i mean is c diminished seventh and all the diminished chords have an interval between each note of a flattened third um, or a diminished third which is how they get their name um, and each of the chords can be identified by any of the four notes that uh, of which it's, it's comprised <coughs> and um, what you call it depends very much on what you want the bass or your accompaniment to be doing and because each of the three diminished chords has four different notes in it it then follows that because there are only 12 notes in the western scale uh, then it therefore follows that there are only three positions for a diminished chord and then you start repeating so you start there with zero one zero one which can be a G diminished a C sharp or D flat diminished, an E diminished, or a B flat or A sharp diminished. Raise that one position to Y two to sorry one two one two Scotland Yard as we know it, and that can be either an A flat or G sharp diminished. It can be a D diminished. It can be an F diminished, or it can be a B diminished. Raise that. One more fret to 2323, two, three, and we've got an A, an E flat or D sharp, an F sharp or G flat, and a C. And then if we keep going up the fretboard, then we are repeating. So 3434 three, four is another voicing of 0101. Same notes in a different inversion. But that's the basic theory behind diminished chords. And I say this song features all of them. So, um, and on my song sheet, I have used the code, um, the letter following, a letter of the diminished chord name, followed by a superscript capital letter O, or a degree sign. And that's a, a quite a, a common way of showing uh, the diminished chords on a song sheet. You will see C dim, or you will see C dim seven, or you will see C degrees. And they all mean the same thing, that you play that, that shape of chord. Right, um, this song, you know, you, I'm sure you know the song, but the rhythm of it is that kind of dum diddlum dum 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 diddlum dum? It's probably some Latino dance, mm, isn't it? Yeah. I don't know which one. 
dancing isn't for me. But um, the, the way to achieve that strum, um, just on a C chord, is to slow down the movement of the fingers across the strings. So rather than have the, the strum all on one beat, then we slow it down. And if you want to enhance that effect, you can do the, the triple, which means running your finger down across the strings and following it by running your thumb down across the strings like but of course um, as I say I wouldn't recommend playing exactly that rhythm pattern or strumming pattern right through the whole song you need to break it up but that's your interpretation <coughs> okay where do we go? The introduction. Uh, the introduction contains two of those diminished chords of which we spoke. Starts on a C, and then we get on to the first of the first position diminished chord, zero one zero one. And then we uh, intersperse that with a D minor, and then we have the second uh, position for a diminished chord. In this case, we're calling it a D diminished. Chord. So the introduction turns out like two, three, four. Twice through, and then we get into the first verse. <clears throat> and there we hit that, um, the first two chords of the intro um, in fact, the first three chords of the intro, a C, a G diminished, then a D minor. And then it goes to something slightly different. We're going, the, the, uh, the melody is going, there were on a hill, but I never heard them ringing. And it's an F minor sixth. Well, again, don't be frightened by the label. It's only a label. And... Um, it's not that difficult. It's one, two, one, three. One, with your index finger on the first fret of the G string. Two, with your second fret of the C string, um, with probably with your ring finger. Then one with your middle finger on the first fret of the E string. And then your little finger hits the C, C note a third fret on the A string. Yeah, imagine Love. a G, uh, a G, and move it across, G shape. Yes, it's, but not in the right place. No, not in the right place. <laughs> it's that shape. Yes, Pam. Yes, I know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, so it's one, two, one, three, and it's a lovely sound. And then we get to uh, C, no, I never, and then we've got, on the melody, does a little rundown. No, I never, so we can replicate that on the fretboard by playing an E minor, but making it a full four string fretted E minor. So it's four, four, three, two. And what works for me is my ring finger on the fourth string, little finger on the third string, both at the fourth fret. Because when we've got that, we can just slide the whole thing down one fret and keep sliding so your index finger falls off behind the nut but you still get to a D minor so we're getting now some people find that a little bit awkward so there's an alternative another way you can get at this it means blowing all the dust off the dusty end because you're going up to the seventh fret and the ninth fret it's a bar on the seventh and your whichever finger, ring finger, middle finger, is on the ninth fret of the G string. And there's a D minor. And from there, you just slide that down. It's a D flat minor, uh, sorry, uh, an E minor, E flat minor, D minor. So we've got it either way. Or 
Same chords, different position on the fretboard, same result. Um, so uh, that's the uh, nearly the, the verse completed, and then we've just got after that little run that bam, bam that. <coughs> And then we need to go to a D diminished, which is one, two, one, two. It's actually a G seventh with the G note sharpened. There's only one semitone difference between a G seven and a D diminished, but it just gives it a little little lift in the accompaniment. Um, so that's the end of the verse. The second verse repeats exactly as the first one until we get to the end. Um, when, as we're transiting into the bridge, because the bridge goes into the key of F, so we would transit from a C into an F via a C7, or in this case, a C9, which is 0201, not 0001. It just adds that D note in it. And again, just makes it a bit more interesting. And then we're into the bridge. So we've got, there was, um, then there was music. And then we come across the third position uh, of the diminished chords, which we're calling a C diminished, which is two, three, two, three. And wonderful music, they tell me. And the, the melody is going, Tell me, and we can do that by playing an A7 and then an A9. So A7 is 0100 0, 0, and A9 is 0102. 0, 0, and again, those ninth chords are, are really an interesting sound. They, they just give the whole thing a lift. Um, Can I say something? Yes, of course. Thank you. Any time. When you go, uh, when you're doing uh, Then There Was Music, if you play the F with the C, added then it's a lot easier to get to the C diminished listen to the wise woman mm. she speaks words speak of the truth words words of well her truth anyway. yeah my truth <coughs> um and um, actually this is, is common sense it gives you that anchor point with your little finger on the C note to go from an F to the C diminished we've shown you that little trick before yeah. but it, it it fits in here so um so we use it and then we get to the end of the bridge and again we're transiting back into C so we would do that via a G or a G7 or in this case a G7 followed by a G augmented. This is another one we've come across before and the way I play it is to play to shape a G chord and then just move my ring finger over onto the third fret of the third string, the C string, and drop my little finger in on the G note, the third fret of the E string. So I the just flatten. F Pam flattens her ring finger across two strings. Across the middle two strings. Whatever works for you. But it's so you're at the actual uh, frets that you're using are 0332. Um, then we f uh, go into the third verse, there was love all around, which is exactly the same musically as the first verse. Then there's a little instrumental break um, that I've based on the one that George Harrison used uh, in, uh, in the Beatles recording version. And if you try to do this, then you'll find that that second position, F minor sixth, comes in very handy. And let's just break that down. If you play a D minor, 2210, right? And D minor seventh, as you know, is 2213. If you slide that little finger down to the second fret of the A string, that's a D minor sixth. So if you think about that, slide it up three frets, so you've got five, five, four, five. There's a second position for an F minor sixth chord. And um, I'll run through that instrumental break. The chords behind it are exactly the same as the verse. 
Um, so if Pam, if you can play the chords mm -hmm. of, of a verse yep. um, and the second verse, because if you use this break, you'll need to go to the C ninth because from the instrumental break, you'll be going back into the bridge. So uh, you'll need that uh, transiting C ninth chord. So where are we going from the earth? So if you play the, melody, the chords yep. of the second verse, okay. S nice and slowly, yes, and I'll try to show you how that instrumental little tune, that little um, melody that George Harrison created, it goes like this. One, two, three. I've got that wrong. Let's start that again. Sorry. One, two, three. That's a bit of a mess, but you get the idea. And if you if you want to um, some further guidance on that, uh, ask ask for me privately, and, and we'll have a, a closer look through that. When we do the play along version, I'll try to perform it up to speed, and I'll try to get it right. <laughs> <clears throat> but uh, but anyway, that's more or less how it goes. Um, then we repeat the bridge. Then we repeat the third verse and finish it with just a little coda on the end which goes that there was you and there's an A flat and finish on the C major 7th which is a lovely way to finish A flat if you're still having problems of it I find the easiest way to achieve A flat is to bar the third fret and then play an F shape. So it's five, three, four, three. And there's an A flat. So that, that uh, little coda uh, again, uh, right at the end, just goes two, three, four. Two. Um, you may have noticed that I played the the C chord after the A flat. If you bar the third fret and play the F shape, then you're in pole position really to go from there to the second position C, which is like so. Or you can just move your stay up, stay on the bar, and then just move your middle finger across one string to the fourth fret of the C string. So we're going and that's A flat to C. And the C major seventh at the end, the nice the nice one I think is simply zero 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 two. But if you don't fancy that one, uh, try zero seven seven seven. That's another um, C major 7th but any of those um, and that's so it's such a lovely song it really is a very pretty song and, and Paul's um, kind of plaintive tenor voice really suited his performance uh, of the Beatles version of this song there are lots and lots of versions around uh, on YouTube if you care to seek them out um, but uh, that's pretty much it for now, I think, isn't it? Yes. OK, so Till There Was You, there'll be a play along uh, later on in the week or at the weekend. We'll have another comic song for you on Friday, one that I'm sure you'll all know. Um, and, uh, well, it's Easter weekend, but we will still be uh, working on Good Friday and putting out our Friday foolishness. So uh, until we meet again, you know what to do. Stay safe, be kind to yourselves and look after each other. And it's goodbye from Pam. Bye. And it's goodbye from me. Bye-bye. See you soon.